We begin with breaking news out of Israel. After months of denials, the army has confirmed three captives who died in Gaza last year were killed by Israeli shelling. The bodies of Elia Toledano, Nick Bezier and Ron Sherman were recovered after the incident late last year. Israel had previously denied responsibility for their deaths. Military officials say at the time of the attack, there was no intelligence indicating captives were held at the location where they were killed. Let's bring in Hamda Salhuth. She's joining us live from the Jordanian capital, Amman, because the Israeli government has banned Al Jazeera from reporting inside Israel. Hamda, firstly, tell us exactly what we know about their deaths and what Israel is saying about them. Well, the Israeli military says they've conducted quite a thorough investigation into their death, saying that the airstrike that killed them took place on November the 10th and that the military was reportedly targeting a Hamas official and there was no sort of intelligence or security information that led to any captives being present or held there. The Israeli military also said in a statement that they do not conduct airstrikes, shellings or any other sort of attacks when they have any information about captives being present at a location where they're they are trying to strike, but it just goes to show you the level of Israeli security and intelligence failures that have taken place throughout the last 11 months of this war. Most notably of this happened back in December when the Israeli army shot and killed three of their own captives in northern Gaza. And Hamda, there is so much anger at Netanyahu for not securing the release of captives in Gaza, especially since the bodies of those six captives were recovered lately from southern Gaza. How much will this latest re uh, revelation, this admission, add to that rage? Well, one of the mothers of those captives who was killed by an Israeli airstrike back in November and their bodies retrieved in December, the news we're discussing just now, she actually spoke to Israeli media and said that she doesn't think Netanyahu actually wants to bring back any of the captives alive because that's what his policy is showing. When the news came out about the six bodies that were retrieved from a tunnel in southern Gaza two weeks ago, there was complete uproar in Israel and anger two weeks of consecutive protesting after that because Israeli military intelligence had claimed that these captives were alive just a few days before their bodies were recovered and that they were supposed to be on a list, many of them, to be released in the first phase of a deal that never happened. So family members of captives say they are exhausted of Netanyahu's policies. The Israeli public says they want a deal. And according to anonymous officials speaking to Israeli media, they say that Netanyahu is the main impediment here for why there has it been a deal, but the premier maintains military pressure is the only way to bring back the captives, while the family members say that that military pressure has only killed captives in Gaza. Hamda, thank you very much for that. That is Hamda Salhud with the latest live in Amman. Let's bring in Gideon Levy. He's a columnist for the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, and he's joining us live from Tel Aviv. Always a pleasure to have you with us on Al Jazeera, Mr. Levy. Netanyahu, as we've been talking about, is already under so much criticism for the security failures that resulted in the October 7th attacks and his handling of the war. No doubt the latest uh, revelation will add to the public's anger, but does it put Netanyahu under more pressure? Does that public anger make a difference to him? Unfortunately, no. But first of all, it is a collapse of his strategy, namely that uh, military pressure will bring to release the, the hostages. Uh, from the beginning, many Israelis thought that that's a major mistake, that the hostages will be released only by a deal. And until now, it was proven to, and this last uh, revelation only proves it again. All those assassinations and and operations and all kind of uh, 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 killings in Gaza added nothing to the most important goal of this war, at least according to Netanyahu, namely releasing the hostages. Now to your question. The anger about Netanyahu is shared only by one political camp in Israel. And we have to remember it all the time. That's the camp that you see on TV protesting every week with devotion every day many times. 
That's the camp that does anything possible to make him resign. But it's just part of the picture, because those who support Netanyahu, their support is totally solid, and nothing will change it. Whatever Netanyahu will do, they will support it. And therefore, all the last uh, pieces of information about the hostages create a lot of frustration in one camp. The other camp accepts it and accepts that Netanyahu knows what he does. And can you see anything changing that? Because we have seen some of the biggest protests in Israel's history demanding the government do what it takes to secure the release of captives. You're saying that is one camp. But until and unless the majority of the Israeli public calls for an end to the war, they can't get the captives back, can they? And you're saying that right now the majority of the Israeli public doesn't want an end to the war. First of all, even the protesters, their end of the war is a very, at least by part of them, is a very special ending of the war. If you ask them again and again, you'll find out that they will not support the total withdrawal of the IDF from Gaza. I doubt it very much that they will support it. They want the end of the war in order to release the hostages, and then part of them will be happy to renew the war, which will bring us to the same place again. And secondly, the protest, as impressive as it is, and as much as I appreciate those people and endure them, until this very moment, they didn't have any politi political influence on Netanyahu. Netanyahu continues in his policy with a solid uh, uh, coalition, with a solid uh, 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 support in the public of opinion, and nothing is changing. So I don't think that killing of another three hostages, as tragic as it sounds, will change anything in this picture. Mr. Levy, thank you as always for your analysis. We really appreciate it. That is Gideon Levy live in Tel Aviv. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get latest news from Al Jazeera.